Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to another video. So, I've been getting a lot of requests lately about making more street lifting videos related to programming. And in the past, I have made some videos that have been related to programming, but they didn't go that in depth about the topic. So this video right here is going to be the first one in which I will actually go pretty in depth about the topic that I will be talking about today. And that topic is, are accessories needed? Uh, and this is a very broad question and obviously there's no right or wrong answer. And in fact, the lazy answer, but the correct answer is that it depends. It depends on your needs. And so let's break down those needs in this video. And hopefully once I do break that down, I'll be able to help you answer that question for yourself. But before I get into accessories, let's talk about the goal here. What is the goal when you're trying to answer that question of whether accessories are needed or not? The goal is to make the fastest progress possible in your main lifts. So since this is a street lifting video, we're going to be using the pull up and the dip as our example. And in that case, if we want to make the fastest amount of progress in the pull up and dip, then we need to minimize the accessories. There's a lot of street lifting programs out there that actually incorporate an excessive amount of accessories. And most people don't even know why those accessories are in that program, they just follow it. But realistically, accessories, if done incorrectly, if implemented incorrectly, can impact, slow down, and even regress your progress. We really need to be smart about our accessories. There are three reasons you would really have to implement accessories into your program. The first reason is for injury prevention and rehab. The second reason is addressing weak points. And the third reason is for hypertrophy. If I addressed all three points in this video, it's gonna be a very long video. So I'm only going to address the second point, which is addressing your weak points. Should you implement accessories for the purposes of addressing a weak point? And in order to answer that question, you need to understand whether or not you actually have a weak point. And realistically, the majority of street lifters and the majority being novices and beginners and some intermediates don't have weak points. They don't have weak points, meaning they could make progress faster if they just stuck with their main lifts. So. The reason I say that is because when you're a beginner, novice, and sometimes even an intermediate, you haven't reached that point in your journey that you've capped out on strength in your primary muscle movers. Meaning if I'm trying to progress in the way to dip, I do not cap out in my tricep, chest, and front delt strength if I'm only dipping 60, 70, 80, 90 kilos, right? These are still, to me at least, these are still below advanced numbers. They're not in that range yet. And so because of that, because you're not in that advanced range, that means that you still have potential left to be exploited in your primary muscle movers, AKA your chest, triceps and shoulders and therefore you can drive progress even further by sticking with your main lifts and not focusing on the accessories so if you're at that point where you are still beginner novice or intermediate chances are you could still stick with your main lift and you could still make progress at a faster rate than if you actually did specific accessories to address certain weak points you think you might have. So that's that. Now, if you're at that level where you're not sure if you're just weak or if you actually do have a weak point and you have pretty advanced numbers 
advanced numbers we could talk about for another day but if you do have advanced numbers if you've been doing street lifting for i would say two and a half years or more and you're plateauing okay maybe now you probably do have a weak point meaning that you've capped out on your primary muscle movers you've gotten strong as strong as you could possibly be in the strongest position of the rep so for example in the pull-up you've gotten very strong at the bottom position but you have a hard time locking out the top portion of the rep by then you can focus on incorporating accessories that will tackle your weak points and these weak points are usually going to be caused by your secondary muscles, your tertiary muscles, your stabilizers, your core, etc., etc. These muscles are perhaps the reason why you have a weak point. If you have trouble locking out in a pull-up, getting that top portion of the rep, then maybe you can incorporate bicep curls and start doing um, 90 degree bicep curls just to get that lockout position strengthened. If you are struggling in the mid portion of the ascent in a dip, you know, you could get out of the bottom position of the dip, but then suddenly you have a problem uh, getting out of the mid position in the dip when you're about to lock out. That's also a weak point, and you can address that in a couple of different ways as well. But like I said, before you get to that point of whether or not you need accessories, you need to first ask yourself whether or not you have a weak point. If you have not gotten as strong as you could be in a strong position, then you need to just keep programming the way you normally would without accessories. If you have gotten as strong as you could have possibly been in a strong position and you don't see progress, then you can start focusing on secondary, tertiary, stabilizer muscles, etc., which do require accessories. Now, obviously, how to, how to program accessories? Uh, it's pretty simple. If you want to strengthen your secondary, tertiary muscles, etc., you need to progressively overload them. But you don't need to progressively overload them to the point where it becomes equally as or more fatiguing than your primary movement, which is your weighted dip or weighted pull-up. So for example, if you want to implement planche leans to strengthen your front delts for weighted dips, then you could do something like three by six to 10 second holds at RPE six to eight. Or for weighted pull-ups, you could do something like three by seven curls at RPE six to eight. And slowly progress those, but again, not to the point where it becomes equally as or more fatiguing than your main movement. That's my point there. Again, you can incorporate it in a number of different ways, but the underlying principle is that it shouldn't be as fatiguing as your main move. Of course, it's definitely gonna affect your recovery. You might need to deload more frequently, etc. But that's the that's the trade-off with incorporating accessories into your program. So that's why I'm saying earlier. You don't need to incorporate accessories if you don't have to because it's just going to make you deload more frequently and you're not going to be able to have as fast of a progress as you would if you didn't deload as frequently. Now, what are some accessories that could tackle certain weak points? I'm going to go over them all here. For pull-ups specifically, you could do mid-pause pull-ups to try to strengthen the top part. You could do top-pause pull-ups. Uh, double pause pull-ups are pretty good. I've seen uh, several different street lifters use these including pure coal. Curls are always great. I think a lot of street lifters, except the French, uh, incorporate curls. I don't really see French people doing curls a lot, but others love curls. Unilateral lap pull down is a good one because it could fix muscle imbalances and also front lever raises to strengthen the lats. Those are really good. For dip accessories, Pause dips. Pause dips are the best. Uh, it gets you out of the bottom portion, removes the bounce that you get from the descent. Great accessory. Planche leans. Uh, I've seen Matthew Zlat use these before and they're actually, they make a lot of sense. One of the best backgrounds to have 
for the weighted dip is actually being a really good static plancher. If you have developed planche muscles, it will carry over greatly to dip, which makes the planche lean a great accessory exercise for front delt strength. Banded dips are really good where you're putting the band to make it resist against you as you go further up in your ascent. Really good for explosivity. And the last one is actually an interesting one it's for core work, it's weighted knee raises. So basically, for specifically for me, I have problems keeping my legs straight sometimes during the descent and ascent. So making sure that you have a strong core could tackle that problem for you. That's pretty much all I had to say about addressing weak points. Again, make sure that you actually do have a weak point and you're just not weak in general. It'll save you a lot of time. If you do have a weak point, make sure you're utilizing the right accessories and implementing it in the right way. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.